Okay, folks, let's look at subroutines, functions and procedures, and also we'll be talking about local variables and global variables in this video. What's a subroutine? It's a reusable piece of code dedicated to a particular task. So it's dedicated to a particular task and it can be reused. Subroutines can be subdivided. There are different categories of subroutines. Usually two main categories are procedures and functions. Now, let's look at um, a program which involves subroutines and that will make it clearer of what subroutines are about. Right, so here we have a, a simple subroutine. Now this is written in Python. Um, Python calls subroutines functions and def means define. Define a Sub a function called addition and it's a equals six b equals seven total equals a plus b print total and this is like an inert piece of code which has to be activated or called and it's called by this line here addition with brackets so if i should run that you can see it gives me the number 13 as here okay so that's like a simple subroutine there now i'm going to comment that out and we're going to run another subroutine here And let's just look at this. This is another subroutine, but this is um, known as a procedure. It will become apparent why it's a procedure technically, but in Python, subroutines, procedures, functions are all known as functions, right? So you've got def addition AB total equals A plus B print total. So you call it by the statement addition 10, 12. So What's the difference between this subroutine or function and the previous one? OK, the difference is that you, we are passing in parameters or arguments into the function. So 10 maps onto A. So A becomes 10 and B becomes 12. So we're passing in arguments here. And if we're passing in arguments, this is how we call the function. So then total equals a plus b. So total equals 10 plus 12. So total becomes 22. Print total, which prints 22. Let's see if that works. Yeah, 22 there. Now, next. So here... Although in Python, this is known as a function, technically, this is known as a procedure um, as well. And we'll see why it's called a procedure and how it differs from a function. Oh, OK, this is in Python called a function and it is a proper function, so to speak. And can we see what's happening here? We've got def, define a function called addition, and you're passing in two parameters, a and b. And then you are adding those parameters, total equals a plus b, return total. So what's happening here? To call it, we are, we've got this statement, result equals addition 100, 200. So we are passing in two arguments, 100 and 200. So when we pass that in, A becomes 100, B becomes 200. See, we're passing in parameters. And then we're calculating total equals A plus B. So total becomes 300. And we return 
total. So we return the value of total, which is 300, to result. So result becomes is 300, and we print result, which we expect as 300. Three hundred. See, now this is technically known as a function because a function returns a ver returns a variable, returns a result. See, we can tell it's a function because it's returning. And here, if we look, here, this is really known as a procedure because it's not what returning anything. And this here is also known as a procedure because it hasn't returned anything. But this is returning a result, so it's known as a procedure. <coughs> so a common question is, what is the difference between a procedure and a function in GCSE? A function returns a value, whereas a sub... Oh, sorry, should read. Let me change that here. Whereas a procedure does not return a value. So that brings into questions, what are the advantages of subroutines? Well, what do you think it advantages it are? Well, one, it enables reuse of code. Then decomposing a problem into subtasks and then writing them as subroutines make them easier to solve. It makes testing easier as each subroutine can be tested separately and several programs can work on a large program at the same time writing different subroutines so a large job can get done more quickly more quickly and five if the requirements of a problem change it is much easier just to make a change in a subroutine rather than search through a long program to find what lines need changing so program maintenance is easy. So what you have in a program is you have you can have lots of subroutines each uh, dedicated to a particular task. So you have a big problem to solve or a big program to write and you decompose it into subroutines and or tasks which you then allocate a subroutine for each task. Right. Now, this brings us to the concept of local variables. Now, let's see what a local variable is. And that can be done in the context of a um, subroutine. Right, please bear with us. Right now, if we've got this subroutine here, and can you see A and B are within that subroutine addition? Now, if I write here print A and I run that. Okay, let's run it again. And it says name A is not defined. And why does it say that? It's because A is local to this subroutine or function or procedure called addition. And it cannot be seen or accessed outside of this subroutine. So A is a local variable there. Now, if we come back here, so subroutines, they can declare their own variables called local variables. And the local variables only exist whilst the subroutine is executed and they're only accessible within the, sub within the subroutine. 
and I think we have demonstrated that. Now, why is it good practice to use a local variable, do you think? Well, what happens is they are declared within the subroutine, and once the subroutine has stopped executing, the memory taken up by the variable is released. Now, this is in contrast with a global variable, and we'll see what this global variable is about, about now. So let's look at this concept of global variable. So it's global variable um, versus uh, local variable. So here, let me declare a variable. And let me just call it global variable. Global variable equals 99. Now, if I put here print and I put global variable, you see, and then I put global global variable, I'll put global variable and I'll put in subroutine and then if I copy and I paste that there and I say global variable and I say outside subroutine now let's see what happens when I run that so the global variable is picked up in the subroutine and the global variable is picked up outside of the subroutine. So it's picked up within the subroutine and reports the value 99 and it's picked up outside the subroutine and it pick, reports the value 99 as well. So you have your global variable here which is declared outside any subroutine whatsoever in the main body of the program but it can be picked up anywhere within the program within any subroutine or outside of any subroutine so it's global as its name suggests so global versus local global variable is declared at the start of the program and their scope is global which means they can be used in any procedure or subroutine in the program and in contrast to local variables, global variables do not release memory. So, which means, do you remember, the local variables, they're declared within the subroutine. Once they're used, and once the function or subroutine ends, the memory taken up, the memory in computer taken up by the variable is released. But the global variable resides continually whilst the program is being executed and it's not released. So that's all folks for now.